Hi, great to have you here today. I'm gonna to go over a couple of secrets in the punting stroke that can really help you out, especially with perception and your alignment. Now, here I have a ball lined up that I'm gonna be putting, and I have a flat cup out here in the distance. Now, I put an intermediate spot here where these are all lined up. So basically, if I took a laser line and shot it through the middle of this ball to the cup, this ball would be right in the way. Now, depending on how you're set up, your eyes may not be able to tell a straight line. And if you can't see a straight line, it's gonna be very difficult to put on the line you want to. So if I set up over top of this golf ball, I'll give you a, a personal example here <clears throat> that I've recently figured out a solution to. When I look at this line, when I look down and I trace a straight line from my ball to this ball, it looks like that this ball is to the left of the hole, meaning that my eyes are not seeing straight. And if I keep doing this, it's gonna to be tough to hit a straight putt or to make very many putts. Now, as I pull my eyes inside, so if I was to drop a golf ball or, or hang the club from my eyes, this would be directly over the golf ball. It looks to the left still. As I go more and more inside, it starts to look, and will for most people, like it gets more and more to the right. Now from here, I'm way to the inside with my eye alignment, and it looks like this golf ball and that golf ball on the hole are all in a straight line as they really are. Now unfortunately, it's pretty difficult to putt from back here. Not really gonna work in a, a stance. Same thing with forwards and backwards. If I'm putting this way, let's say, if I get my eyes in front of the golf ball, then the alignment of this ball starts to look more to the right. If I get my eyes behind the golf ball or more here, where I'm looking down much more behind it this way, this ball starts to look more to the left. Now again, unfortunately, I have to set up with my eyes way over here if I'm putting this ball way in front of it, really not a very usable putting setup for that ball to look like it's in line. So I realize it's out of line. I realize some minor adjustments I can have. And if you're just barely out of a line when you're doing this, make those minor adjustments. Bring your eyes a little bit inside. You'll find that most pro players tend to have their eyes one to two inches inside the golf ball that they're putting, meaning they're inside of it this way. Most pro players tend to have their eyes slightly behind the golf ball when they're putting also. That's completely fine. <clears throat> if you're doing little small adjustments and it looks straight to you, that's all you need to do. And I'll get to a minute, in a minute here, I'll get to exactly what I would do to ingrain this once and for all. Now there's also tilt, if my eyes are lined up this way, so if imagine I'm looking at the camera, my eyes are level with the camera, I could tilt my head this way, I could tilt my head that way. That can feel a little bit weird, but as I tilt my head to the right, or I tilt my head this way, going here as I'm setting up, that will change my perception of where this golf ball is too. So if I tilt my head to the right, it still looks to the left. If I tilt my head to the left, it looks in line, but everything just seems really cockeyed, like I can't see a straight line. So I typically wouldn't tilt my head this way or that way too much. Uh, do that sparingly. But again, if it helps you see the line, it's all about being able to see the line and feeling comfortable over it. So what I'm telling you is, yes, I can see the line when I'm in here, not gonna be comfortable, not gonna be able to hit a putt. Yes, I can see the line when my head, eyes are way up here, not comfortable. Yes, I can see the line when my head's tilted way over here, again, not comfortable. The last thing to check here is moving your chin back into your chest or up higher like this. So for me, when I drop my chin down toward my chest, it makes it much easier to see the line. This looks perfectly in line now. This ball, this ball, and the cup are all perfectly in line. And I can use a pretty standard setup here where I just tuck my chin in. Now it looks like it's very nicely lined up. And I think that's a lot of times what you see players doing when you see a, a kind of a weird setup, maybe like a Michelle Wee, where she's way hunched over like this. Or maybe you see a Jack Nicklaus, where he's kind of way over. He's getting his eyes to where they can see the line properly, even if he doesn't realize that. So what I want you to do is go through those tests. A little inside, a little outside, forwards and back. Get to where it feels comfortable, and the three balls look like they're in line. Once you find that, 
I would use a very simple device like this to mark what that setup is. This is a little eyeline mirror. This is the small one, the mini one that will go in your golf bag, which I really like. So I would take this, I would line this up with my target in the distance. It also comes with a shoulder attachment. I can put some links to this down below. If you buy from those links, I get a few bucks. Helps to support the channel, keep me making some videos. Uh, so I greatly appreciate that. If you already have one of these, no need to buy them. Any mirror will be fine. But I'm gonna go ahead and set up here and I say, okay, I'm gonna put that golf ball out in the distance again. I'm not gonna take the time in this video to get it perfectly lined up. Let's imagine that's in a straight line. I'll do a little quick view of it here. It's probably gonna need to be about like that to be in a straight line. Again, I, I know it's not perfect, but I'm not gonna get a laser out and get it perfect here. But when I get my head tilted down, I can see where my eyes are in this mirror. My left eye is almost on the golf ball, just about an inch inside of it. My chin is tilted down to where my nose is on this red line here. And then as I'm looking at this golf ball, I can see, okay, those all three look pretty well in alignment. Now, yes, I realize I'm a little more hunched over. It may look a little bit awkward, but if your eyes can't see it, you're not gonna be able to make the putt. So I would get to where your eyes can see it. Now, once I have these positions down, and I say, okay, I like this setup. This all looks really good. I'm tracking it well. I can take a Sharpie and I can just mark on the mirror. Here's my left eye, here's my right eye. A dot, a dot. I can mark, here's my nose. Boom, there's a dot. I can look at my shoulders on the shoulder plate here and see, are my shoulders square? Okay, I see they are basically perfectly square. My forearms are square. All that's set up correctly. And now I know I'm ready to roll some pretty straight putts when I get this set up. Now, once I have that marked and I can see that straight line, this takes just five minutes a day. You don't really have to do anything crazy to get set up like that and, and ingrain it. Uh, I like the, this is why you're seeing basically almost all tour players putt with one of these putting mirrors because you really need some kind of baseline. This is no different than taking an alignment stick on the driving range, putting it down by your feet and hitting to a target so that you can check your alignment. Doesn't mean that I'm changing my alignment every single day. Doesn't mean that I'm trying to get it perfectly lined up. I'm not trying to match my alignment to this device. I'm finding <clears throat> where I can see the perfect line and then I'm marketing it on this device so that I know I can see it day in and day out and then I just check it for five minutes and that's all you gotta do. Now once you've checked this, let me give you another great little tip on perfecting your putting stroke. This is something that took a long time for me to find out. I wanna share it with you here today. We've all seen these putting arcs, putting ramps. Um, these are very uh, similar. So an arc like this has a very gentle arc to it, kind of forwards and back. That's the same as a putting ramp that's on a tilt like that. So if you're on, a, on an angled ramp and you put up the ramp, then your putter's gonna come a little to the inside. So if you imagine, let me grab, I have a, a piece of plywood sitting here for a side project I was doing. Let me grab this. You can imagine that if this is on a tilted arc, an angle like that, that matches basically where my putter is, as my putter swings back, it goes to the inside slightly because it's coming up the tilt. As my putter swings through, it goes back to the inside. This arc is designed to match a normal putting stroke or a pretty typical putting stroke arc that you'd see on tour. I really like these devices. I think that they're, they're great to train your stroke. And what most people do on these though is incorrect. They'll grab a ball, and I don't have this lined up correctly. Let's assume that I have this lined up to the hole in the distance here just to make this video a little bit better. They'll grab the ball, they'll put the heel of their putter against the arc here. They'll pull against the arc a little bit, and they'll keep the heel of the putter on it the entire time. Well, I probably have it lined up wrong, which is why it went a little bit to the right. But anyways, once I get that lined up, where I want it to go, then all I gotta do is simply pull the heel of the putter against the arc, and it's gonna go essentially in the exact same spot every single time. Now here's the problem with that. When this is resting against this arc, as soon as I take the arc away, I'm putting different forces into it, I'm probably gonna wanna pull the putter back inside. If I don't have this to guide me, then I'm not gonna make that same stroke. Now here's the cool thing though. 
if you have two of these, you can train essentially a perfectly uniform stroke. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and set these up to where now I pull a second one on the toe of my club. It's touching the toe of my club right here. So basically this would be touching it the whole way. And all I'm gonna do is give myself a little bit more space and just make these parallel with each other. So now I have a little gap here. This one's pretty tight, but I should be able to make this stroke with my putter between them. See, I have a little space. Here I'm kind of clanking back and forth there. I have some spaces I go back. I have some spaces I go through. I should be able to hit this putt now without touching these rails at all. And that is really the tight angle I have it set up here. But with a little practice, you can get it to not touch either one of those. If you're starting out and you're a beginner, get this lined up first to make a putt. Get a little bit more space so that now I got probably three quarters of an inch. Make sure it's about uniform the whole way through. And then from there, I can just hit putts without touching either one of them. As I get better, tighten it up, tighten it up, tighten it up. And sure enough, you're gonna have a pretty daggone uniform putting stroke. One last thing, get your eyes lined up. On that shoulder, make your shoulders square, make your forearms square. One little thing here, if your forearms aren't square, you may need to feel like you tuck this elbow in. Lots of times people's right forearm will get too high like this, and all of a sudden I wanna cut across it. I wanna tuck that arm under until my forearms are pretty square with this arc. And then from there, I'm gonna feel like my upper arms are pretty cinched into my sides of my pecs. So I'm rotating my arms in, and then from there, I'm just gonna rock my torso back and through, and it'll match that arc really well. Very little hand manipulation. Now, if I'm doing a lot of wrists and hands, I'm not gonna be able to make this go between those gates without hitting into them. If my forearms are out of alignment, it's gonna to be tough to get to go through this gate. So get your shoulders, your forearms lined up, get to where you can see the line well, and then from there, cinch it in, rock the body back and forth, and you're gonna be able to keep this pretty straight. Now the last tip I'll give you, absolutely paramount here, if you look at every single PGA Tour player, you will not see hardly any body movement, virtually none unless they're hitting like a 60 foot putt from the belt buckle down. So I'm gonna feel like the balance in my feet in my entire lower body <clears throat> is extremely stable and I'm just rocking back and forth. And if you looked at my lower body here, I'll turn this way, there's almost no movement whatsoever. So you're really not seeing my knees or my legs move at all. That's critical if you're gonna be so precise to where you're gonna be able to putt balls within a quarter inch, half inch, make lots of putts. The lower body shouldn't be moving at all. Now, if you really wanna take this up to another notch, the best thing to add to this is dialed in wedges. And when you look at the pros, whether they're 20, 30, 40, 60 yards out, they're able to hit those numbers on the dot. And a lot of people like to use a clock system, so stopping certain amounts back and through to be able to hit those numbers. That's only half the battle. There's actually something that you have to pair with that, a trick with your timing that makes that work. And I'm gonna share that with you in a bonus video. I'll play a preview of that here in a second. All you need to do is click the card that pops up on your screen and you'll get instant access to that video. I can't wait to share that with you. It's gonna go perfect with your putting. If you knock those wedges stiff, especially on shorter par fours, maybe where you hit a great drive uh, inside 100 yards in the green, or if you're on those par fives, hopefully you're on them in two and you can make a putt for for a birdie or an eagle or a two putt birdie. But if you're anywhere around the green, 30 or 40 yards, that's where you're gonna make the birdies, but we gotta wedge it within 10 feet if we're gonna make very many of them at all. Even if we're putting great, most of our makes are gonna be inside 10 feet. So it really comes down to the wedges if you're gonna make a lot of birdies. I'm gonna play that video for you. All you need to do is click the links down below the video or up on the card. You'll get instant access. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, I used to actually practice a lot in high school. This is one of my favorite things to do. I had a, a strip mowed down the back of my yard where I took the lawnmower. My parents probably hated this because I mowed it down to like half inch turf in the back of the yard because we lived on a farm. And I would set buckets or towels along this and I would try to set them at those distances that I knew. And maybe I, I knew my, my 56 degree went right at 65 yards. So I'd set a bucket 65 yards away and I would go ahead and do my nine o'clock swing and I would try to fly it right into the bucket and I'd be, get to where I could, I could tell for sure if I was gonna be a couple yards short or a couple yards long, just because it gets so ingrained when you get the rhythm and the finish 
the same every time. So we can use different length backswings to control the distance of our wedge shots. So for example, if we imagine that I'm a clock and six o'clock is directly down, my wedge would be at six o'clock or my, my arms would be at six o'clock. I can go back to a 730 swing and I can have the same finish and hit it a certain distance, or I can go back to nine or 1030 and swing through to the same distance. And that's gonna control, or the same finish point, and that's gonna control the distance that my wedge shots are gonna fly in the air. And I've gotta keep that ry rhythm and that tempo very, very consistent. If I vary my tempos, I can hit it all kinds of different distances. So for example, I could have a real quick tempo, 730 swing, and probably hit this 90 yards. I could have a, maybe not really that far, probably 50 or 60 yards. I could have a very slow, slow tempo 730 swing and hit half that distance. So I've got to get my distance the same. I've got to get my rhythm the same. That's the real key to it. And the second piece on there.